Hey everyone, welcome you all. In this video, we are going to discuss about the CoAP protocol which is used in Internet of Things. So, uh, what is mean by CoAP and uh, what are the types of messages which are used in CoAP protocol and the diagrammatical representation for the same. So, first thing, CoAP is uh, said to be constrained application protocol. So, that is the abbreviation for CoAP. So, that is uh, the name itself indicates constrained application protocol means uh, it is used for those devices which are having the uh, constrainment on resources. So, the end nodes will be having limited amount of resources at that moment the CoAP is used. Uh, so, its overhead will be very less and um, it is powerful technique to transfer a small amount of data. So, that's why the CoAP is basically used because... Um, the HTTP is a powerful tool for exploring the internet, but it has got a very high overhead time and um, the amount of power consumed by the HTTP is very high. So uh, in internet of things, all the end devices are like, they will be basically sensors or some actuators and they are pa battery power supplied. So they have got a limited amount of power supply with them. So we can't use large amount of power supply just for data transfer because their lifetime has to be very uh, long. So it has to be one year or two years. So there is a need for the protocol which will be consuming very low amount of power. So that's why uh, the engineers have invented this one that is the CoAP protocol. So is the specialized web transfer protocol designed mainly for constrained and low power network. So as I have said, this is mainly designed for uh, constrained devices and low power networks where the power consumption is very less. And now the question arises why we should go for CoAP instead of that HTTP, MQTT and other protocols which are already there. So the first uh, point which we can say is present web technology protocols do not consider memory, energy and computation constraints of the end devices. So the present uh, protocols which are present, they will be uh, not bothering about memory and um, uh, mainly the energy consumption of the devices or the energy consumption by the protocols when data transfer is happening and computation constraints which uh, need to be done by the end devices due to the heavy uh, format of the protocols. So if the uh, transferring protocol is heavy then the computation work needed uh, for both the server and client is higher. So to avoid that the CoAP should be used. So that is basically to reduce the computations uh, between server and the client. And the second point says that as the end devices are manufactured by different manufacturers, there is a need for common protocol for easy communication. So the meaning of second point which we can take is, so let us say we have a Wi-Fi and uh, it can be manufactured from any company. So let us say Airtel has manufactured the Wi-Fi and you have installed that in your house. So it has got two antennas. So one is 3.4 gigahertz and one is 5.5 gigahertz. So basically that is uh, saying that it has got a two frequency operation. So it can operate on 3.5 as well as 5.5. So that will not bother about uh, at this point. So uh, assume that you have a Wi-Fi in your house and um, but your internet connection is from Jio. So you are using a Jio uh, SIM card. But uh, this is manufactured by Airtel. So they have to have a com common protocol in between them so that there is a uh, pos there is uh, there should be a possibility that they will communicate with each other with the help of this middle protocol so there is a need for common protocol so it can be manufactured from any company so let us say jio have manufactured the wi-fi kit uh, and you are using airtel for the internet connection then this protocol should take care that this internet will uh, communi uh, successfully communicate with this Wi-Fi. So it should not say uh, say an error. So uh, that is the meaning of this, uh, this second protocol saying that the end devices may be manufactured from any company but uh, they should have a common protocol uh, among them so that the data transfer is uh, successful in between them. 
so the next point which we can list is the need a common application layer for resource constrained devices so the resource constrained devices that as i have said they will be having very limited amount of resources with them so they should be provided with a common application layer for the ease of communication so these are all the possible uh, reasons why we should have a coap instead of other http and mqtt protocols uh, okay so until now we have seen why you should uh, go for coap instead of other protocols now we'll see what are the features of coaps so what points will make the coap usable instead of the other protocols so the first point is coap provides request response interaction model as that of http protocol so similar to http protocol the coap provides the request response interaction that is if you want to get some data then if this is a server then you need to send a query saying that uh, i want some information so this is server and this is client and you want uh, uh, you want to search something so let us say you want to know the temperature at some point so you will be searching like uh, the temperature at uh, point x y z and it will be sending an interaction or the data uh, in reply with that this query saying that is this is the let us say 38 degrees celsius is the temperature at this point so we are sending an request and we will be getting an response for that request so that is the meaning of request response interaction but mqtt is like a publish subscriber model where uh, we will be having a model here and we will be having the subscriber so whenever there is a data it will be sending to all subscribers whether you want or not so that is like a uh, forcing the data for some uh, clients because they will be not needing uh, needed that data at that moment and the next point is coaps help um, in integration with existing web along with meeting special needs of constrained devices so uh, it integrates the web technology here so it is um, a back end proportional that is uh, it is uh, used to uh, so the uh, coap can be used with the same infrastructure which is already uh, already present in the present web and the uh, next point indicates it supports asynchronous messages a low overheads and simple proxy and caching possibilities so asynchronous messages it indicates so whether you are present or not the data will uh, tra the data transfer will happen so it is not necessary that both the client and server should be online at a time uh, so for some time if you are offline then when you again come online at that time the data will be transferred to you so it is not mandatory that whenever the uh, broker is sending the uh, data to you you should be online always so when you are coming online the data will be sent so until that it will be stored in the network itself that is in broker i can say and uh, uh, it has got low overhead as i said it is a lightweight protocol so obviously its low overhead will be very less and um, it is very easy because its uh, proxy network is very simple and caching possibility means uh, the frequently used data should be stored somewhere so that there is no need to take the data again and again from the uh, end nodes or sensor so it will be stored in the cache memory of the broker and uh, if it is required immediately and uh, it can be sent within no time so that is caching means uh, storing the data for temporarily okay so that's all about third point and the last point indicates it can be used for machine to machine communication due to lower constraint requirements so uh, if there are two machines and they want to interact with each other then we will use coap in between them because it has got low constraints and it will not uh, put any extra constraints or computational requirements on these two machines so we can use a coap uh, to communi uh, to make communicate these two machines with each other okay so now coming to the classification of coap message types so uh, what are all the types in the coap messages so there are four types the first one is the confirmation uh, that is confirmable messages and the second one is non confirmable then piggy bag type of messages and uh, the last category is the separate messages so uh, first we will see what is mean by confirmable messages and later we will see the rest three so uh, coming to first one uh, here is the client and server 
so confirmable messages indicates uh, if you are sending some data to the server then you will be getting a confirmation from the server saying that yes i have received your data so that is like a fixed type of communication where there is no uh, tension of uh, losing our data because if uh, at one time you uh, didn't receive the acknowledgement back at that time uh, the client will be sending the data again until and unless he will receive the uh, acknowledgement from the server saying that yes uh, the communication is successful i have received your data so in first step the client will be sending the uh, confer that is connection uh, message to the server so whenever the connection becomes successful at that time the server will send an acknowledgement saying that uh, the connection is successful between us that is in between client and the server okay so in second type of uh, the message that is non confirmable message so there is same uh, the client and uh, there will be there and the server will be there so uh, the client will be sending basically message directly to the server so in response to that message here the server is not sending any type of acknowledgement so it is like uh, there is some possibility or some uh, probability is in, uh, present uh, whether the message will be received by the client uh, server or not so we can't guarantee say that here the message will be received sure and in third type of message that is piggyback message so the client is there then server so first the uh, client sends a, a request for connection that is this one is the request connection here and this is first step and in second step itself the server will send acknowledgement and data will be sent uh, with that acknowledgement so if you are requesting for something from the server then in the second step itself it will send acknowledgement as well as the data so it will be sent simultaneously and for that data the connection that is again uh, there is a relation so again uh, if you are uh, if you have received the data now so this uh, this is over one step and again you want some other data then the same steps are followed that is again the client will be sending the connection message to the server and in response to that the server will send acknowledgement with the data itself so here you can see acknowledgement is there plus data is also there so like this a uh, piggyback type of message will be sending acknowledgement as well as the data so it will be faster as compared to the confirmable message because in confirmable message client and server so first we will send a request for connection then it will send acknowledgement then it will send the data here so it will take some more time as compared to the piggyback message because here with the help of acknowledgement itself it is sending the data now coming to the last category of co-op messages that is a separate messages so in this case we will be having client and server as usual then uh, the client will send the connection request for the server and in response to that it will be sending an acknowledgement saying that i have received your message and here is the confirmation from my side then the client should wait for some time so it will be uh, waiting for some time so it is basically one or two seconds so it will be waiting for that period for uh, for the uh, response so at that time uh, waiting from uh, when the time period that is waiting time period is elapsed at that time the server will send the connection along with the data so i can say the data will be sent uh, after some time uh, by the server so after it will send first it will send acknowledgement then it will be sending data after some time and for that data the client will be sending an acknowledgement saying that i have received your data so the transmission was successful between us so like this the separate message so for uh, one connection there will be one acknowledgement and one data here and for that uh, so there will be an other acknowledgement sent so this is most uh, secure type of communication i can say so there is 100% guarantee that the data will reach here because there is uh, there is involvement of two acknowledgements here so the first one will be for connection and second one will be for data okay so that's all about uh, coap messages and its type so i hope you like this video and in my next video we'll be discussing about uh, the coap message format so what is the possible message format and what are the uh, fields which are present in that format so 
until that bye so if you are new to the channel please guys subscribe the channel and uh, don't forget to like